Hey, it's Rowan here from Radio.co. Remember the old saying, if you build it, they will come? Well, in today's globally competitive market, just having a product isn't enough. But using the right marketing methods, drawing people in is easier than you might think. So let's have a look at 20 quick and easy ways to promote your radio station. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. 20. Connect with guests using matchmaker.fm Communities bring people together, and a lot of the time it's not what you know, but who you know. Places like Matchmaker FM will find guests for you so you can have them on your radio station. It's developed by our sister company, Podcast.co. It's basically a social platform where you can talk to influencers and celebrities, so you always have someone on your show. And the best part is Matchmaker is 100% free. You can even put yourself out there so you could go on like other people's podcasts and promote your own radio station. 19. Submit to internet radio directories. Internet radio directories are a bit like yellow pages if you remember them. Places to list your station and be found by thousands of listeners trying to find your show. And if you're new, places like Streamer have out-of-the-box tools to help you get started straight away. Most notably mobile apps for iOS and even smart skills for Amazon Alexa. 18. Target your audience. Broadcasters often fall into a common trap, and that's trying to find a much wider audience when you should be looking for a smaller niche. As the saying goes, if you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. There are so many stations like KISS FM, for example, which are going for a wider audience in terms of what music they play. So don't waste time on that and instead focus on your core demographic. Whether that's your local town, a subgenre of music, or even just a station about how much you like your dog, make sure you have a niche. 17. Optimize your station with SEO. If you search for a radio station on Google, the chances are they will be in the number one slot. But the art of SEO is getting found even when you don't put in your station's name. We don't have enough time here today to talk about SEO, but if you'd like to learn more on how to make your SEO better, click the link in the description below. 16. Build a social media presence. We all know that Twitter and Facebook have millions upon billions of members. With a baked in audience, social media should be a no brainer. So why not start a Facebook page, a Twitter profile, and include updates from your radio stations, such as which presenters on, what music you're playing, and any upcoming events you might be having. Number 15, cross promote with other stations. Cross promotion is a way to showcase your station on other stations and vice versa. Big broadcasters like Bauer and iHeartMedia regularly will cross promote on different stations. This obviously benefits your own station and the station you're working alongside, so really it makes sense. Radio doesn't always have to be competitive and sometimes it makes sense to make friends in the industry. For instance, if you know someone that works at a station that mainly focuses on cats and you run a station that focuses on your dog, then it makes sense for you two to work together because there's no threat there. The audiences are going to want either the cat or the dog or maybe they'll want both. That was a weird analogy, ignore that. 14. Write blog posts. Want to keep listeners in the know? It makes sense to write blog posts. You could review new albums, interview artists, showcase something that's going on at your station that month. There's a whole world of possibilities, really. Liverpool-based station Melodic Distraction will regularly post blog posts just about general things they're covering. This could be upcoming shows, new DJs, and music they love. Not only are blog posts shareable, but they're also great for search engines like Google, which helps build your SEO. So you've suddenly become more discoverable for listeners to find your station. 13. Build marketing lists. Everyday life can be busy and sometimes you're just simply not going to be available to make that tweet or send out a newsletter. Marketing tools like MailChimp will help you build lists with all your contacts on so you can send emails through scheduling rather than having to do it there and then. It's so important you stay connected to your fans and you don't forget about individual ones. So having a list of all of them is a great way to stay connected. 12. Post on forums. Places like forums and message boards are a great way to find fans for your station. Even places like Reddit or Facebook page could be ideal places to find listeners. All you need to do is figure out what the niche of your station is and then find what sort of listener would enjoy that niche. Then all you need to do is go searching. Well, oh, that sounds a bit menacing actually. Don't go searching, just research. However, don't just go in full throttle, this is my station, come listen, because people don't like that and it could be against community rules. So rather than just plug in here and there, why not join the conversation and eventually people will get to know the name of your station just through being part of the conversation. 11. Put up posters and give out flyers. This might seem like an old fashioned approach, but guerrilla marketing is still a thing. Especially if you've got a local radio station, then this just makes sense. Putting up stuff like posters in cafes and bars in your local area, or even just putting letters through doors, will definitely help you get the local people to know about your station. And no, this doesn't mean that your station will stay small forever, because big brands like McDonald's and Guinness still post stuff through doors and put posters around. 10. 
use paid adverts. So although social media is great, using it for marketing can be hard and it might take a long time to get anywhere. Using paid advertisements on the other hand is kind of like using cheats in a video game. It will get your adverts spread a lot easier and lots more people will see it. All the big social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter have advertising platforms and there's even Google Ads where you can have an ad on the top of search results or even playing before a YouTube video. Number nine, build backlinks to your website. Backlinks are kind of like signposts to your website. Getting links on other trusted websites will help improve your SEO and search engine rankings. So if you've got an artist or DJ that works on your station and they have their own uh, website or Twitter profile, for instance, then why not ask them to link towards your website or try and get covered on something like the local news? Number eight, host events. There's no better way to get people excited about your station than hosting events. Things like competitions, gigs, uh, pub quizzes, or even fundraisers are bound to grab people's attention. And by giving your listeners the chance to get involved and maybe even win a prize or two, they're much more likely to stay with your station. Number seven offer discounts on merchandise. Everyone loves a bargain and everyone loves merchandise. If your listeners are passionate enough about your station, they'll want to get hold of merchandise. So why not offer discounts? And I don't just mean throwing a logo on a hat or a jumper because most of the time people are not going to be interested in that. So why not think outside the box like Shady Pines Radio, which have created loads of merchandise based on some really, really cool designs. And it's super easy today to make merchandise on places like Vistaprint and Awesome Merchandise. So it's not that hard either. Number six, invite regular DJs for live takeovers. Why not showcase the best and brightest talent? Whether locally or globally, inviting DJs to your station will bring their audience with them. Take Foundation FM. The all-female-led station has a roster of really cool DJs and artists working with them. Number five, get local news coverage. Global news can overshadow everything else sometimes. So, if you're a local station, it's best to focus on the local stuff. Now, most people might look at getting their station promoted on global news, but if you're a local station, then local news is where you should be looking. Local news won't make big waves or anything, but it will get you noticed by the right people for your station. But how do you do it? Broadcasters like IB for Live Radio regularly get coverage from local news because of DJs they're hosting or live events they're doing. So when you're thinking about doing those live events we mentioned earlier, think about who you can invite from the local news. Number four develop good listener communication. Going back to social media now, and when you think about it, radio is really just one way. It's you talking to someone else. With social media, they get to talk back. By developing relationships with listeners on social media, they're more likely to tell their friends and their family to come and listen because you actually spoke to them. It's also really easy to start polls now on places like Twitter and Instagram. So if you want your listeners to get involved straight away and you want to run like a quick one hour poll while you're on air, you can absolutely do that. Number three, repurpose past shows. Big stations have presenters on around the clock, but small stations don't have this fortune. When you're not around, why not repurpose live shows that you've already done? With our platform, Radio.co, you can record shows directly from your station, whether that's you and another DJ chatting, or just a curated playlist. And if you want even more shelf life, why not upload a video version to YouTube, or a podcast version, using our sister company again, Podcast.co. This will allow people to catch up on their own pace and not feel like they have to join in live every single time. Number two, produce the content your listeners want. There's a reason why most big stations will play the same tracks over and over again. Because that's what the majority of their listeners want. That doesn't mean you have to play the top 40 hits on repeat. Far from it. Instead, just find the content that caters to your audience the most. So for example, if a song you played the other day went down really well with your listeners, play it again today. Or if a presenter on your station in particular is doing very well, why not push them? Number one, create clear call to actions. Most listeners are quite passive and only a fraction will engage further than actually tuning into your radio station. So if it's through ticket giveaways or feedback, if you make it very clear how people can engage, such as giving out your email or your social media handle on a regular basis, people are more and more likely to actually engage further. When our friends at Melodic Distraction had to move their studio, they created a Kickstarter page. By mentioning the Kickstarter page on a regular basis, they managed to raise over $50,000. So through mentioning over and over again, people will eventually go and engage further. And that's our 20 ways to promote your radio station quickly and easily. But have you found success with other approaches? Let us know down in the comments. And for more videos like this, make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself 
or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software. <laughs>